And welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Now, what would you ask if you had the chance to hold politicians accountable? Now, pollster Frank Lunds brings them straight to the American people, and he's got another special guest. Frank. Not only does the show give you the answers to what's happening in Washington, but we provide you with the leaders. The vice chairman of the Senate Republican Conference, John Barrasso, you're also a doctor. I want to ask you about Medicare and health care because it's one of the most controversial issues right now. The polls show that the American people don't agree with the Republicans and their positions on Medicare. Are the American people wrong? The American people, I've learned, are never wrong. I've practiced medicine for 25 years as an orthopedic surgeon taking care of families in Wyoming. And you know what patients want? They want the care they need from the doctor that they want at a cost they can afford. Medicare has been a wonderful, successful program in this country. You know, think about when they started this back in 1965. People were, men were living to about 69, women to about 70. Now, because of the advances in modern medicine, women are li living into their early 80s, men to their late 70s. So there's a huge challenge. The baby boomers who were teenagers when they formed Medicare are now at 10,000 a day coming onto the Medicare rolls. So we need to strengthen Medicare. And I think the real wake-up call was very recently where the, the, the folks at Medicare said, we're going to be bankrupt five years sooner than we thought, just 13 years from now. So the truth of the matter is we have to save and strengthen Medicare, not just for the people who are on it now, for my patients, for your parents and grandparents, but also for the next generation so it's there for them. So what do you think? You guys agree with this? Yes. Yes. Tell me why. The thing we hear the most is waste, fraud, and abuse. Every time something comes up, it's always that. We never see anyone get fired or go to jail for waste, fraud, and abuse. If they could cut out all the waste, fraud, and abuse, would that solve the Medicare problem, yes or no? Yeah. No. Who uh, says no. yes? It would help. Who says yes? Who says no? No. Okay, so they're more sophisticated than you might have expected, but still, they ask you a legitimate question. What about the details? How do you save Medicare? Yeah. Well, the, the waste, fraud, and abuse is just part of it, yeah, but, but I think you also have to have a patient-centered approach, not an insurance company-centered approach or a government-centered approach. You know, we, there are two plans that are out there. Uh, one trusts the American people to make their decisions and give them control of their own lives, which is a proposal that I support. The other is the proposal that gives the control of Americans' lives to a, a board, a board that's not accountable, not elected, and this is a board that I believe is going to deny care for American seniors. That's my worry, and the health care law, uh, which uh, I did not support, you know, it took over $500 billion from our seniors on Medicare, not to save Medicare, but to start a whole new government program for other people, and I think that's the big problem. Reactions. What do you mean? The words that you use, we hear all these catchphrases out of D.C., and tell us what the words mean, because Obama uses shared sacrifice or sacrifice. What does that word mean? Everyone at 50, please. Great question. Strengthen to me means giving people more control of their own lives, having decisions made by the patient and the doctor, not by a government bureaucrat or an insurance company bureaucrat. And I think if you let people be responsible shoppers, they do a much better job than a government one-size-fits-all approach. And that's why that's a position that, I, that I've supported and continue to support, having patients involved in the decisions and their care. James. Uh, I'm the son of a, of a doctor, and I remember uh, back in the day when people would come in and there would be a sign at the door saying that payment is due when service is rendered and they didn't have uh, insurance or anything like that, uh, not as much as they do now. Um, I think the big problem is that people don't know how much it really costs for health care. Um, expand a little bit more about how choice could help that. Everyone at 50, please start reacting. Yeah. Patients don't know what it costs, and in a matter of fact, they don't even think of it, for the most case, as their money. It's somebody else's money, whether it's the insurance company money, whether it's the government money. People are much, uh, I think people are really smart, and they're really good with how they spend their own money, but they don't think about it as much. And I think at the same time, you have doctors who are concerned about lawsuit abuse, ordering a lot of expensive and unnecessary tests. And, you know, as you said, you're the son of a physician who, who likely found themselves in a situation ordering expensive tests because they were afraid they might get sued. So I think that adds a lot to the cost. But with all due respect, you're a doctor, and you're trashing your own profession? 
I'm saying that that's the reality of the healthcare system in America. Patients don't know what a lot of things cost, they, uh, and, and doctors are concerned, so that you have additional costs and unnecessary uh, services given. One more question, and you can give me a one-word answer. Are you more proud of being a doctor or a senator? I'm more proud of being a doctor. I'm more at home in the operating room and in a, a patient's office visiting with that patient than I am on the floor of the United States Senate. Do you guys like that? Yes. 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 Senator Barrasso, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And when we come back, when we come back, Senator Tom Coburn and the first ever congressional female focus group, so don't leave.